During the First World War, there were scores of British soldiers who were led out to the firing ranges and were tied to stakes before they were executed by a firing squad. These were known as the men who were shot at dawn, and the reality of the First World War was far from what they imagined it would be like. There were huge drives in Britain to bolster recruitment numbers, and thousands of men joined up thinking they would see the world with their friends, almost as if they were going on holiday or a trip. But the reality was they were stuck in disgusting trenches which were disease-ridden, and death lurked around every single corner. Every day soldiers considered if the next day would be their last, and many soldiers suffered from what today would be called PTSD or shell shock. These men who fled found themselves accused of cowardice or desertion, and the sentence for this was execution and death. Join us today to look at horrific executions of the soldiers shot at dawn, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Between 1914 and 1920, over 3,000 British and Commonwealth soldiers were sentenced to death, and they were court-martialed for desertion, cowardice, or even falling asleep on duty. There were only around 10% of these sentences that were carried out, and 306 members of the British forces were shot for their crimes. But the medical evidence today would state these men were suffering from shell shock, and this was not recognised at the time, and there were many soldiers who were very ill, and should have been sent back, home, away from the front line. But many of the hearings for these soldiers lasted only a matter of minutes, and the men could not defend themselves properly. These men were not able to tell their stories, and they were then sentenced to death. But a number of men who were said to have been found wandering on the battlefield in sorry states were still accused of desertion. But the trials would be written and well documented, and these were said to have been rather awful, as the accused often did not have a lawyer helping them, and they would also be refused the right to appeal their sentence. Whatever a field marshal said went, and with this many men were sentenced to death, and soldiers would be shot without the right to appeal. At the time, shell shock was not properly understood, and there were no medical exams that occurred, so the well-being of the men was ignored. But the trench was enough to make the strongest of men suffer a terrible nervous breakdown. There was a threat of death looming each day, and this would strike a horrific fear into the hearts of soldiers and the men. But there was a problem with a lack of sleep, with constant artillery being fired and landing, and a lack of rest and the worry about death would be enough to drive anyone to suffer mentally. The trenches were also very wet and cold, and they were often flooded with water and waste, and the conditions of the trenches often fell to minus 15 degrees Celsius, and it was very tough with rats also being found. There was disease and other illnesses, and many of the soldiers could not take any more, and they wanted out of the conflict. Executions for cowardice and desertion to begin with were initially used as a way of trying to force soldiers into the trenches and back onto the battlefield. It was believed that the men would rather risk their deaths and lives on the battlefield than meet a certain death on the firing range. Lots of those men who were executed at dawn were volunteer soldiers, or were conscripted into the army, who had no choice but to go and fight. It was almost a death sentence for lots of people, and the British army was suffering with low numbers, so the men who were fighting were often very unprepared and were poorly trained. Firing squads that carried out the executions at dawn would be made up of around six soldiers, but at times there could be twelve who would carry out the execution. The firing squad were given blank rounds, but then one or two soldiers would be given the actual normal bullets to fire, and they did this to make sure that no soldier carried the guilt of the fatal shot. The condemned would be tied to a stake, and the medical officer or a doctor would then place a piece of white cloth over the heart of the victim for the firing squad to aim at. A priest would then say final prayer and would hear final words before the order to shoot was given. Following this, the shots were fired and a medical officer then went to examine the victim. If there was a failing in the firing squad, then an officer would go across and would give them a coup de grace gunshot to the victim's head, firing a pistol into their head to kill them once and for all. Many of the men who were shot dead would refuse to take a blindfold, showing they were actually very brave and were not actually cowards. Private Joseph Byers was a soldier who enlisted in 1914, but he was underage. Within months he had been caught on the front lines and had been caught absent without leave, but this was deemed as an attempt to desert, and he would be given a prison sentence, but then he would be tried for desertion and then executed. Another man who was executed was Sergeant Joe Stones, a man who was commended for his leadership. He would allegedly throw away his weapon, and he was part of the Durham Light Infantry. But during a patrol, he had been ambushed by the Germans, 
and Stones would not return fire, as he had not taken the protective cover off his rifle's breech. He then ran off and warned his friends, but he was then charged with deserting his post and refusing to fight, and was shot at dawn despite being considered a skilled leader. During the Battle of Luz, Private Billy Nelson was wounded, and he refused to go over the top and into no man's land. He was having his first meal for days when the instruction to move came, and Billy said during this court trial that, I have lots of trouble at home and my nerves are badly upset. My father is a prisoner in Germany and is losing his eyesight through bad treatment. My mother died whilst I was in England, leaving my sister aged 13 and my brother aged 10. I am the only one left. I had no intention of deserting. To make an example to the other soldiers, he was shot at dawn on August 11th, 1916. Another man who suffered was Private John Robinson, who was also an experienced soldier, but he and another man would abscond from their night watch duty. The pair managed to escape, and they were then arrested on a train to Rouen. But then the men were said to have been suffering with nervous strain, and Robinson was shot with four other deserters near to Weep. Private Abraham Bevinstein would join up under age, and when he got to the front line he was just 16. He was on the front a month and suffered when a grenade exploded next to him, and he also suffered from trench foot. He wrote to his mother that, We were in the trenches and I was ill, so I went out and they took me to prison, and I am in a bit of trouble now, and won't get any money for a long time. His family did not know he joined until the letter came home. They would learn that their teenage son was shot for desertion on the 20th of March 1916. Sergeant John Thomas Wall of the Worcestershire Regiment was also an experienced soldier, and he fought for three years on the front and went missing in August 1917. This wasn't like him, but his mind was suffering, but he was another man who was executed by a firing squad. Edwin Dyer was another man who was shot at dawn, as he was considered a scapegoat to bring other soldiers into line. He was rounded up after saying he did not trust military leaders, and with this his commanders hauled him in front of a court-martial, and for this he was executed and was given no chance to appeal. Robert Young was also executed for a desertion, as he would face heavy shelling in a dugout, and he was then shot for his cowardice. These are only just a small percentage of the men who suffered the horrific fate during the First World War. There were many more stories of around 300 people who were sentenced to death and were shot at dawn during the conflict. Shockingly, Britain would be one of the last countries to pardon those men who were executed for military offences during the war. This brought some relief and peace for the families of those whose grandfathers and great-grandfathers had been shot at dawn and disgraced. There should have been a greater understanding of the condition of shell shock and the suffering of the soldiers on the front lines, and they also should have been listened to, but facing the firing squad would be a terrifying execution. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.